webinar time for sickle cell awareness. All these great sponsors, of course, we are one of the sponsors of this. Join us if you can. Hello, everyone. We'll begin shortly. We're just going to let a few more people uh, come into the room and then we will begin. Well, thank you, everyone. Welcome to Living Sickle Smart. I am Ray Blaylark, your host, and I am the president of Sickle Cell Foundation of Minnesota. It is Sickle Cell Awareness Month, and we have turned it up. It's all about education, awareness, making sure that we are where we need to be, advocacy, supporting, making sure people know who we are and that our voice matters. Matter of fact, you'll hear more about our newest program, Our Voice Matters, towards the end of today's program. But before we get started, I really want to make sure that I say a special thank you to our partners and sponsors. Of course, Healing Blends Global, and that's why we have Dr. Charlie Ware, but also we have Agios, Be the Mats, Children's, and of course, the Sickle Cell Disease Data Collection Program for Minnesota. Uh, and that is through the CDC Center for Disease Control. Tonight's session of Living Sickle Smart, as I said, is with Dr. Charlie Ware. He is a natural wellness physician. And you can learn more about our Sickle Smart episodes by visiting any of those links after the show. But I also want you to know that within about 24 hours, a recording of this video will be available on our YouTube channel. So you can watch it on demand, you can share it with your friends. And of course, we encourage you to share the link with your friends and family using your social media. So let me stop sharing. You all who have been here before know that this is recorded live. So that means we got bloopers and all. When they happen, they happen and we just keep it moving. But uh, 
I am so excited. This, this is a man that I have known of for many years. I've been in, many of you know, I have a son uh, that is a young adult. He's 26 years old, living with sickle cell disease. And uh, uh, as he was entering transition, it just seemed, he was on his medications um, that were prescribed by his physician and those were just fine. We had no problems with them, but it just still seemed that his quality of life was suffering. And I really began to explore some other options. Uh, and I'm so glad that I did. Um, but I, I kind of reached back to, to what I knew about this man. Dr. Charlie Ware is the absolute expert you want in your corner. And as a natural medicine doctor, his expertise spans the areas of acupuncture, herbs, homeopathic medicine, sound therapy, epigenetics, epigenomics. He's been known to say that none of the letters after his name mean a thing if he's not using his knowledge to help others. So without further ado, I want to um, introduce you to Dr. Ware, but I also want to remind you, feel free to make comments and Q&A throughout this session. In fact, if you have comments, put them in the chat, but if you have questions, please use the Q&A button down at the bottom so that your question doesn't get lost in the scrolling of the chat. All right? So, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Charlie Ware, and we are going to hear from him, and we're going to have a discussion. We want all your questions, right? That's what makes Living Sickle Smart great, is that it's an interactive experience, and you can ask your questions on the spot, and we'll always do our best to answer. Here's my disclaimer. I am not a physician. I'm a, Dr. Ware is. I am not a physician, nor do we represent at Sickle Cell Foundation of Minnesota. We are not replacing your doctor. We are not part of your medical team, but we are part of your medical knowledge. So without further ado, again, <laughs> Dr. Charlie Ware. Thank you ever, ever, ever so much, Ms. Blaylock, for, for such a warm and energetic you know, introduction. I, I always... Um, I'm not gonna lie, it always baffles me. I'm like, who's she talking about? Is, is that me? She's talking about? Oh, oh, wait, wait. <laughs> I do the same thing. <laughs> you know, um, because it's, it's being, I guess, in the weeds and, and in the trenches, we don't see the things that, that we're accomplishing. And I just want to thank you for all that you're doing for this community. Uh, I was on a call um, earlier today with some individuals, and we were just, you know, having these conversations about just the the huge voids of of you know education. You know, the, and I always tell people, you know, the term awareness is awesome, but I, it's more education, it's more critical education that we really need to get when it comes to this disease right here. Um, always start with stats. I mean, if you look at you know what's sickle cell disease, it's it's much more rampant than individuals really understand what it's really about. Um, in fact, the numbers that come out worldwide, sickle cell and thalassemia is actually on the rise. Uh, and and what people don't really understand is is on the rise because of the lack of education is the misappropriation uh, of a lot of funds that's been a lot allotted to early um, detection and things of that sort. So the the reason why I'm so you know, uh, passionate about this disease, not just because, you know, I, am, I, I do care, I have sickle cell beta thalassemia, um, which people, you know, they know, they don't know, but it's really because of the fact that there's no one else really doing it on a larger scale. Um, we, we do have some treatments and things that are sort of there, they work beautifully, but it's not enough, in my opinion. Um, not when you still have individuals, you know, um, in their early 20s and, and having a child with sickle cell disease, when they're like, well, how did you not know? You know, this money, you know, has been allotted since 1972 um, here in the United States. So that's one reason why I, I applaud you for, for continuing uh, these efforts. Um, the last time in Minnesota, I made the mistake of, of flying up there without a jacket in April. I'm like, it's April. <laughs> it's April. <laughs> that's <laughs> us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. Many people ask me, there's people with sickle cell in Minnesota. How do they survive? Exactly. We acclimate. Yes, exactly. Exactly. We exactly. acclimate <laughs> to wherever we are. That's why right. we're survivors. Exactly. And that's the beautiful thing about, you know, if, if, if we think about sickle cell, sickle cell tree and, and the fact that our ancestors were put on ships and brought over with this horrible, horrible disease, and we still it still survives today. So it shows how much of a survival rate that we can actually have, you know, if we're given the right tools to survive. And, and as you said, we are survivors. So 
in 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 saying in doing all this, what I basically do in my lecture for living well with sickle cell disease um, is not just talk about the research I've done. Because I've done tons of research. I mean, uh, I entered medical school because I wanted to understand sickle cell better myself. When I actually um, I, I knew at an early age, like I said, you know, I, I'm almost 50 myself, and, and and I knew at an early age I had sickle cell. But again, back in the day, it was only called sickle cell trait. I got retested now about 12, 13 years ago. That's when, because I was having crisis and things there. So, oh, you only have the trait. You should be, you should be totally fine. No, I was not. I was having constant pain. Um, so long story short, I knew at, at an early age that I had it and I had to manage it in such a way that I was still able to do all the things I wanted to do. So I play um, baseball and I play baseball and also football. And my senior year, of all years, my senior year, um, I, I had an issue and went to the doctor or whatever. And the doctor said, well, you have sickle cell, you know, and I'm like, wait, 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 I've had it all my life. I played sports all my life. So why are you telling me now I can't play? Caught my school up in the whole nine. And I said, no, I'm sorry. That's not going to happen. I'm going to play the sports I want to play. And, and I still played. Um, but I'm saying that because of the fact that, you know, this is in the 80s and, and early 90s when, you know, there was no internet. You had to go look through the medical books and trying to find things to, to prove your cause and things of that sort. Um, so I've always been a researcher trying to find a way to live the best I can with this disease. And the reason why I chose a natural route versus going to school, the medical school, let's go through a whole research thing. And I did that and I, I wasn't fulfilled. The natural route for me, I found was an easier much long lasting uh, type of, of, of healing and, and living for me. Um, I was never the type that I actually took medications anyway. My grandfather uh, was full blood for cold Indian. Um, so the Native American, I never said Indian, I always said that, I'm Native American. So he always, he always treated me with, with natural things anyway. So I always had a natural mindset. Um, so when I entered, you know, uh, natural medicine, uh, naturopathic, acupuncture school, all those things, my, my biggest thing was, okay, what can I, Put together that's going to help me with my sickle cell and i actually had a very very bad crisis right in the middle of class one day i was in clinicals and i had a real bad crisis and no one knew what it was i was trying to explain to them they're like uh, uh, uh and just started sticking with needles and putting things in it was, it was it was funny but painful and that's when i decided that it, it was all on me i had to figure this out for myself so for the last 25 years it's been my journey uh trying to find you know biomedically, naturally, like what can I do to really come up with something that can be long lasting? Um, and that's when the, the, the first aspects of anything, you know, herbal came together for me. So I've been using natural herbs for, like I said, 20, about 25 years uh, to treat myself and others around me as well. Um, and then all of that uh, sort of migrated into something else where I want to understand why this was working. Why am I, you know, able to do mixed martial arts and play AAA baseball and, and do all these things and fly all over the world, have issues here and there, but hey, my, my hemoglobin, hemoglobin is always over 10. If I have a pain crisis, it, I never, I've never gone to the hospital um, for a pain crisis. Um, I can't tell you that. I mean, for 40 some years. You know, I've not been in the hospital, never had a blood transfusion. I, I think about it because it's been that long. Um, so it's one of those things where I had to, had to figure out, like, why is this working? So that's when I started to really study and get a fellowship in gen um, genetics and genomics and epigenetics and all these things to really understand how the genes open and close and, and, and work and all these things. And we find out that, you know, herbs really do work beautifully with the body. Um, in fact, if you look at, you know, from a genetic standpoint, you know, herbs are our first medicine, you know, it's even in the Bible, if you actually read our label, we, we have Ezekiel, you know, 47 on there, you know, so <laughs> uh, yes, I'm Christian, by the way, but um, yeah, yeah, the flip side of it is, you know, we, we're, we're able to prove that genetically as well, because uh, even CRISPR, you know, once they did the human genome and some animal genome, then they start doing all plant genomes and realizing, wow, these things are designed to really work to, directly with the body itself. Um, a few years ago, I, I wrote a book called The Code of Longevity with some, some friends of mine. It was all about the things that we can do to make sure our genes were going to be expressed the best and also for us to live the longest as possible as well. And my chapters when it was basically the you know, bio, bioactive nutrients. Bioactive nutrients are the things we find in, in plants and in fruits and veggies and herbs that make our, herb, uh, make our genes sing. And also along with that, I came up with what I consider 
the four pillars of health and how we're going to actually stay healthy for a long time. And yes, with sickle cell disease, yes, with any other chronic disease, but when we focus on sickle cell disease, I'll tell you my four pillars, and this is the essence of, of, of the lecture tonight. My four pillars are very, very simple. And when I tell people my four pillars, they look at me and they're like, is that simple? I'm saying, yeah, that's simple, but you got to do the work. So sleep, diet, stress management, and exercise. Sleep, stress management, diet, exercise. You get those four right, you should never have any issue at all, okay? And everyone always asks me, well, but sleep, like well, why you put sleep up there? I'm like, sleep is the most important thing you can do for your body, bar none. Ask me, I'll tell you why. <laughs> it's because of the fact that, like, uh, I'll give myself an example. I thought I was Superman. Um, and then also looking at genes, genes are so cool. So I'm, I'm, I'm a nerd, by the way. So but looking at genes, you're able to see certain variances and, and certain patterns in people where, um, you know, some people, we, we, we can say that, you know, genetically you need seven to 10 hours of sleep per night. Some people need eight to nine. Some people need a lot more than that in order for them to function optimally, right? And I, have, I actually have a variance that I only need about six hours of sleep a night to make sure that I'm functioning at a higher level. And I took advantage of that for first way too long. And I was sleeping like four or six or whatever and all this crazy stuff. And I started to, to get really, really sick. When I say really sick, it basically means that I wasn't, feel, I wasn't functioning at 100%. I was like, okay, 80% is fine. It's, it's good enough. It's good enough, right? Um, just, just drink a bunch of green tea and I'm, I'm, I'm great. No, I was terribly dehydrated. Um, I had some other issues going on and I had to really take care of my body. So long story short, that's it, it, so many things we can see with our genes. And I do, I do a lot of genetic testing on a daily basis, um, you know, with different uh, clientele, you know, telehealth and things of that sort. But sleep, we see um, through sleep, sleep is the best and most efficient way for our body to do what? Detoxify itself. Okay, that's the first thing. Our body detoxifies itself, it repairs itself. It does all the simple things it's supposed to do. You know, I always tell people, um, you know, and I had two patients today that said, I just gained sleep and they come here and they fall asleep and they wake up. Like I didn't sleep. Like, well, I slept over you for about 10 minutes. You were dead sleep, you know, type thing. But every time you wake up, you feel what? You feel refreshed. You feel refreshed because our body has a chance to actually come down, get rid of all the excess cortisol and all these other stress hormones um, in our body and help our body rest, repair and put things where it's supposed to be, Right. That's the beautiful thing, beautiful thing about sleep, as well as the fact that that's when our body repairs itself. So all the oxidative stress that we create throughout the day, all the junk food we ate, all the stress we put our bodies under, the um, lack of sleep, the, the yelling and screaming, the, all the things that, that we've done to our body, our body say, okay, now it's time for me to use all the nutrients that you ate, eaten, have eaten, and now use those nutrients to detoxify and repair all the damage you've done to set you up for a better day tomorrow. That's the purpose of sleep. Right. Um, so in the dreams are, are just a bonus. Uh, you know, so but but when we don't do that efficiently, our body doesn't get a chance to properly detoxify itself. So it creates what? An inflammatory loop. So you're constantly inflamed. So as a sickle cell patient, if you're constantly not sleeping, you're allowing your body to hold on to more oxidative stress. And think about this, sickle cell patients, we have a 1.2 to 1.8 uh, uh, times more of a meta metabolism rate. That basically means that we're producing cells a lot faster than the average individual. So we have to rest a lot more because we have more oxidative stress issues that start to happen. So that's why it's so important for us to get that sleep thing correct, to allow our bodies to properly rest, to relax and repair itself, to get rid of all of the excess crap and junk and everything else it's supposed to get rid of, right? That's another reason why we, when we start, start, start to move into the whole nutrient diet thing, it's not about being vegan. It's not about being plant-based. It's not about being, you know, carnivorous or keto or whatever. It's just eating real food, guys. Just eat real food. I don't care what it is. The only thing I will say when it comes to diet is make sure that what you're eating has a high nutrient, is nutrient dense, excuse me, but also you're not allergic to it. Like I know that, you know, doing genetics, I know that between 75 and 83% of the African population, all the Africans, even if you have a little bit of African in you, you're going to have a lactose intolerance. Okay. So this is just from doing genetics that we know I mean, before we said this over and over and over again, but now we know genetically that most individuals cannot do, you know, cow's milk. Now goat and sheep's milk is totally different because what did we heard over in Africa, 
sheep and goats. There were some cows there, but we mostly use cow only for it. It's actually meat itself. So you got to be very, very careful when you, you're eating the cheeses and the butters and the, the whey protein. There was, oh, you know, I'm vegan, but I'm like, but that's whey protein. That's the old, that's the, the, the fat off of the actual milk itself. And you shouldn't be having whey protein anyway. It's horrible. That's another story. It's another, 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 another beer, another bar. So, but, but the essence of it is you got to make sure that what you're eating what you put in your body is having so much nutrition inside of it that any sort of disease or any sort of um, oxidative stress is going to push it out. So you got to make sure that all your cells are functioning at the highest point. So that's the reason why I, I go back to the whole herbs and everything else. We find that the individuals who use a large portion of herbs in their diet, and this is not even Americans or Greeks or Italians or Africans, this is individuals in these blue zones. Blue zones are places where typically these people live to be over 100 years old, and they use a lot of herbs. And yes, they eat fish and they eat you know, little small animals, but they eat a lot of fruits and veggies and they rest a whole lot and they have community and they, they talk amongst each other. And they, they you know, it, it, it's really about being as simple as possible. So that's why stress management is so important as well. When you're not managing your stress, everything I just mentioned, your diet and also your sleep is going to be totally knocked off. And you're going to produce more inflammation inside of your body with the over uh, production of cortisone, with the bad choices, because when I mean, you have too much cortisone, cortisone works off of sugar. So you wonder why you just want to keep having sugar over and over and over again, because your body is just want to keep feeding that, that inflammatory stress loop. So make sure that you're eating the things that are proper for yourself to now de-stress your body internally, and then learn how to do things that are not stressing your body out. Like, okay, if you know you're going to walk into a stressful situation, prepare yourself efficiently. Do you know the, the, the most common reason why individuals go to the hospital, the ER? Panic attacks, anxiety attacks. Yes. And sunny nights are usually the, the biggest and, and most busiest nights, especially during the school year, because teachers and other people who have to go back to, to, to work and things of that sort, they get stressed out Saturday and Sunday nights. Monday mornings, you know, and it's because it's, it's really how we are handling our stress. So this, this whole movement and in, in entertainment and in, in, in sports where your mental health is so important is greatly important, especially in our community. If we say that, that we're stressed out, oh, you're weak. I'm depressed. You're crazy. Like, no, I'm not crazy. I'm depressed. I have something going on that I cannot shake. You know, and then in our community, a lot of times I tell people, I'm like, well, you're angry because you're depressed. I'm not depressed. I'm like, yes, you are. You're so angry because you're so depressed that you're trying to just keep something going and moving and moving and moving. So mental awareness, mental health awareness is something that we also need in this community, especially inside the sickle cell community. You know, uh, we hear of the hospital stays and things of that sort. I'm like, listen, yes, it's always a two-way street. I hate the fact that a lot of hospital administration treats us like crap, but at the same token, don't go in there with the attitude already. And I say it's because of the fact that you're dealing with something that you're already upset about. You're anxious, you're nervous, so you're going there with this anger trying to protect yourself versus now you're not looking like someone that needs help. You're looking for someone that wants a confrontation and you don't want that. So learn how to calm that, that anger down and really turn it to positive energy. Was, uh, let's, let's figure out how to best treat me versus how best to now me get upset, you get upset, no one gets what they want and I'm getting a bad treatment. You always gotta turn it. But even with that anger, you turn that anger into so much stress inside your body. I don't care what sort of treatment you're gonna have. You're gonna stay in there longer because now the cortisol that's actually attached to those pain hormones and pain receptors are now blocking any sort of um, pain treatment inside your body as well. It's been proven over and over again. So stress management is so important. Sleep and stress management is so, so, so important, guys. You, you just don't understand how, how easy these things are and how important they are. You know, for me, People always say, oh, you know, you're always talking about food, food, diet. I'm like, it's not diet. It's the proper types of food. But if you're not sleeping well and you're not handling your stress well, I don't care what you do. You can take as many pills and herbs and medications as you want. You are still going to get sick. And that's why my four pillars are just so simple. And the other thing in, in our community is the fact that we fail to understand that exercise is not going to a gym. I haven't gone to a gym since I stopped you know, mixed martial arts, guys. And that's been a long time. That's been at least, 
My oldest son now is about 18. It's been at least 19 years since I've been to a gym gym. I don't like gyms. I have a gym in my house, but I work out at my house. I move my body at my house, stretch, yoga, capoeira, which is a form of martial arts. But I do things just to move my body. That's exercise. On the weekends, you know, with my kids, I'll go on a bike ride, go like a you know, five, 10 mile bike ride, you know, over Saturday, of course, Saturday and Sunday. You know, that's me moving my body. That's me moving my joints. The reason why AVN sets in is because of the fact that we don't move our body. Those microcapillaries do not get fat because you're not stretching those joints out. We're not doing, you know, simple squats. We're not doing simple stretches in our neck, our low back, and our hips to maintain the, that, that musculature, that nerve in, um, conduction, also that, that blood flow to those joints. So yes, twice a day, sometimes three times a day, I'm doing deep bends and deep stretches into my hips, into my shoulders, into my neck, because those are the most important places for uh, AVN. But the, the thing I usually hear is people say, oh, where it hurts. Yes, it's going to hurt in the beginning, but you got to build it up. You got to build the tolerance to just keep slowly moving your body. I'm not saying go to the gym and lift, you know, lift weights. I'm saying just stretch. That's a form of exercise, stretching your body, elongating. Another important thing about stretching and exercising is a lot of the, the venues go back up towards the heart. But you got to stretch the muscles out because most of the venues go between our muscles, like in like our calf muscles, a major venue will go right between there. So as you're walking, stretching that is helping you pull the blood back up towards your heart. So if you're just laying there in bed and trying to prevent a crisis from happening because you don't want to move, you don't want to you know, do anything too rough or whatever, you're not allowing the body to really do its job. OK, so again, my four pillars are what? Sleep diet, stress management, and exercise. And these are simple things that we can do on a daily basis that we can monitor what we put in our mouth, we can monitor what we put in our head and allow in our head to allow the stress, right? And in sleep, the biggest thing with sleep, I tell people this, there, there, there are two reasons why people don't sleep. Overthinking and on devices too late. Overthinking basically means that you're you're not you're not even prepared yourself self for the next day. Warren Buffett, the man, he, he controls about what two hundred and fifty billion dollars, <laughs> billion dollars. He he actually has one hundred and seventy eight billion dollars in cash sitting in the bank somewhere. I was in a lecture years ago, and someone asked a question. They're like, you know, Mr. Buffett, you know, you do so much, you do so many different companies, da 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 da. da. How is it that you, you seem as if you're so nice and relaxed all the time? He said, well, son, I'll tell you this. He said, a long time ago, I made myself a promise that I'm only going to do 10 things a day. Only 10. He said, my 10 is, of course, are different than yours. But, you know, yes, but one of my 10 may be call a president, call a head of state or whatever. But, but he said, write down 10 things and only focus on those 10 things. And when he said, if I get all of them done, great, I'm done for the day. If something doesn't get done, I move it to the next day. But 10 things, that's it. So every night, for the most part, I write down either before I go to bed or before I leave the office, write down 10 things or so that I want to get done the next day. And what doesn't get done, it doesn't get done. I'm sorry. You know, so sometimes if, if you don't see email from me or whatever, I love you, but you weren't part of my 10 things I had to get done. The, the most important things on my on my list so that's what i do other thing is we we take our you know laptop or our phones and tablets or have a television inside of our bedroom but that doesn't allow our brain to rest and relax and get us into a deeper sleep normally i would actually wear blue blocking glasses um to you know because you know, the whole blue block in um uh, a light coming from from computers and tablets and things of that sort. It really has shown, and a study just came out last week um, in genetic times, where it actually does uh, affect the receptors on the back of our eyes, and it actually does uh, disrupt our sleep. It disrupts some um, some um, hormone production and some sort of and some um, some, some some gene uh, production as well. So you got to be very very careful with all of these things. But I tell people this: I say, look, listen. Your bedroom is designed for two reasons, two things, and they both begin with S's, right? The first one is sleep, the other one is sex. If it's not any you know, those two, you should not have an electronic device inside of your room. You should not have an electronic device inside your room, period. 
Okay, because all you're doing is not allowing your body to fully get into a sleep. And every patient of mine who've done this, who finally got into this, the habit of, I just want to check, I want to see what's going on. Da, da, da. I'm like, when they start to really get off the devices at least 90 minutes before it's time for them to go to sleep, and then they get into a good sleep hygiene, which basically means that you do some stretching, you take your shower, put some smell goods on, turn down the lights a little bit, get ready to actually go to sleep. They sleep better. They detox better, and a lot of that inflammatory, those inflammatory responses just naturally go down without even having to take anything crazy. Change your diet a little bit here, and then you're just doing these simple things, you sleep so much more efficient. And the same things on the whole stress situation. I'm like, if you know you have a stressful job, learn how to do things like one, maybe wear lavender. They have these bracelets. Um, I don't have this is one, one of my braces I always wear, but they have these braces where they, they're made out of um, lava stone. You can actually put drops of lavender or essential oils on, on these things and smell that. We know lavender and, you know, orange, things of that sort. It helps calm the mind down a little bit. You can try that. You can try keeping your lights at a certain level where it keeps you calm. Or if someone's stressing you out, make sure that when that person is going to come around, you take three deep breaths and calm yourself down and go back to a normal you know, uh, about body rhythm as well. So make sure that you're doing things that's going to unstress yourself. I've seen times where people stress themselves out and I go to their place of work as a joke or whatever, because I, I used to do some stuff with local American Express. I go to one of my my my, my employees, not my employees, my gosh, one of my um, uh, patients, like, you know, office, whatever. I'm like, you're stressing yourself out, but you have this big box in the middle of your floor and you walk around this big box all day long. It's like to the side. And you have a straight path. Oh, well, yeah, I'm like, you're making an excuse, but why, why are you not making your life more simple? Sometimes we make our lives complicated. Keep your life very, very simple, right? So the things, find ways we can keep our lives as simple as possible too. And we can actually not manage stress from not, not actually allowing ourselves to, to be the best that we can as well. So there's many little simple things that we can do to manage our stress and all these things in very, very simple ways. But I mean, there's a slew of things you, you can do. You, you know, just manage your stress. But the basic things, like I said, um, the sleep, the um, stress management, the eating, guys, the eating is such a visceral thing, not just because it goes in our stomach, but it's, it's something that if I tell people, well, you can't eat that anymore, they get so upset with it. Well, you can't, you say, I can't eat it. I say, well, I don't say it. Your body says you can't eat it because you feel sick when you eat it. But what I say is, is really about making better choices in the right times as well. So, uh, mean like if you know you're stressed out, don't go for the easiest thing to eat. Don't go for the um, the chocolate bar when you just eat a piece of fruit, right? A lot of times we think that we are hungry and we're thirsty. We're dehydrated. A lot of times we think that we're hungry and you just haven't had the right amount of, of healthy fats in our body, right? If you're using anything other than, and write them down, if, you, if you're using anything other than coconut oil, olive oil, or palm oil, you're not having the healthy fats inside of your body. Right. So I had to learn how to even keep like maybe cashew butter, like raw cashew butter um, and peanut butter at my office. I'm, I'm so I'm so hungry. No, you're not hungry. You just haven't had enough fat in your body today or the right amount of protein inside your body. Even though I've been vegan for over 30 years now. So it's, it's my, a matter of managing you know, your your hydration levels, managing your protein levels, but also managing your healthy fats as well. And salt is not a bad thing, guys. Stop, stop having this thing. Oh, so, 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 so this is you know, the reason why I have high, high blood pressure. You know, you have high blood pressure because you're chronically dehydrated and also you have the incorrect salts. Like Celtic sea salt and true, you know, salts, you know, are going to be full of nutrients because you got to think about this, guys. All of your salts I and mean, all of your trace minerals inside of your body, your magnesium, selenium, manganese, all these, they're stored in different forms of salt in nature. So when you have an Celtic sea salt, which has 120 to 140 different trace minerals inside of it, unlike regular table salt that has four, you know, so yeah, you're going to be able to have a much more nutrient dense, you know, type thing. You know, sugar is horrible, but it's the type of sugar that we have. Like me, I only have date um, syrup. I have, date, I'm sorry, date sugar or date syrup, which basically is from dehydrated dates. Or is from like dates that's been boiled down in, until they became basically a serum. Why do I do that? Because dates are full of different trace minerals: magnesium, zinc, selenium, barium, borium. All, all, all these things are inside dates naturally. You know, so you know anything you put inside your body, make sure that it has nutrition behind it. 
Another reason why people start using monk fruit. Monk fruit is also very, very sweet, but also it has a ton, a ton of nutrients inside of it as well. So is, is when you're looking at food, is really looking at how can I substitute one thing for another? And if you're looking at cost, I say I tell people, I say, listen, I said, is a new iPhone that more important for you to have a new iPhone versus you being able to live longer without pain? You have to decide. Is that Gucci belt that much more important than you being able to say, I have not been in the hospital in over a year and I've been able to do all the activities I want to do? You know, again, I'm not trying to touch anyone's pockets, but what I'm saying, you got to think very, very logically about this. Because I see this a lot of times. I have people come here and be like, oh, wow, I, I got to pay how much for what? I'm like, but you, you, you have a Louis Vuitton purse on and, and, and Gucci slippers on, uh, but you, you don't want to pay you things for your health. I'm like, listen, I say, it's up to you. I'm like, I, I'm just telling you what you need to do to be healthy. Uh, it's, it is what it is. So you have to make sure that you're looking at your health as being the most important thing that you can do for yourself and also for your future generations. This is the way I look at it. And that's one reason why I came with the four pillars to make sure that you understand that sleeping well is important. Nutrition is important. Your stress management is important. And moving your body, you have to move your body. You have to have to, if you have sickle cell disease, I don't care if you have a trait, you got to move your body at least 15 minutes every day. And that's the matter of your stretching and taking the stairs down at least two flights every day. You just do that. Just move your body, move those hips, move those shoulders, just stretch, do something to move your body. All right, guys, any questions? Wow. I, I mean, something so simplified, but yet so rich in, in knowledge and in wisdom. So I am, you know, I, I, I wish we could put things like this on a billboard because we have been indoctrinated into a belief system that mm -hmm. these things do not matter. Mm -hmm. um, and I would even say that they just, they, they make the things that they want to matter to us much louder to us in our society. So it's not that this information isn't out there, but there's so much more of, of the information that tells us that that's what we need uh, mm -hmm. and that that's what's important to us. So I love that. One person did ask, um, would you say that mindset is equivalent to self, uh, to stress management? Of course, of course. I mean, um, I, 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 really, I have a really, really good friend of mine. His name is Addy Adebisi. Um, and Addy, he was, he's a rugby player. He was, he's, he was called the, the London Fly. He's Nigerian, but he, he, lived, he used to live, live in London. And he has sickle cell SS. He played for 11 years professional rugby. I don't know if you, have, if you know what rugby is, but rugby is like playing football and yes. soccer with no pads. Yes. You know? And, and, and he played, and yes, he had a few limitations, but he played for 11 years, guys, at a high level, rough sport that, you know, I always tell people, I, I love fighting, but a few people I won't fight is rugby players, because those guys are just straight crazy. So, you know, but, but, but I'm saying this to say this, he and I had this conversation early on when he and I first met three or four years ago. It was just that he was like, you know, I played, I played rugby. He was like, yeah, I was in pain or sometimes, whatever, but I played. He was like, you know, I admire you because you know, you did mixed martial arts, you played professional baseball, you did, you know, all these things and you didn't let anything hold you back. So exactly. I, I, I learned early on that sickle cell doesn't have me. I have sickle cell, sickle cell trait, right. whatever it may be. I don't care. That's I don't right. Care. That's you know, right. I would still do, do as much as I can. If, if, if what I, I do is still better than most, then I'm making out. Yeah. You know, I, I have too many people that, that are coming here and I have to go say, I'm and get up. Walk, swim, do everything you want to do. Well, I was too, I couldn't, who told you that? Did you tell yourself that? Did you tell yourself that? You know, the only time I, I don't do anything is when my, my body may say, you know what? You need, you need to lean here a little bit longer. You need to rest up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. If my body doesn't tell me that, okay, th let's go hard at it. Let's yeah. go hard at it. Listening mm -hmm. to our bodies is an art. You know, we, yes. we have drowned out that, that voice. Yep. Um, with distractions, yep. unhealthy distractions. Oh we don't know how to quiet ourselves. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You the, know? The, the, the funniest thing, <laughs> I say this is funny because I have people telling me, I, I, I hate eating you know, natural food. I'm like, why? They're like, well, it makes me go to the bathroom. I was like, you're what? supposed to go to the bathroom. That's great. It makes my stomach hurt. I'm like, you're supposed to... Your stomach getting a little crampy is a sign you must go to the bathroom. If you go to the bathroom a whole lot when you have natural food, that means you had a lot of stuff stuck inside your body. Like you so need what about to go to the 
Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, I'm like, you need to go to the bathroom at the very least once a day, but hopefully twice a day you go to the bathroom. What? I don't go that much in the whole week. I'm like, really? Oh, come on. You get out the mindset of being, having a little pain, little cramp is a bad thing. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not a bad, you just go to the bathroom. Don't hold it in, you know? Wow. wow. So what, you know, we take a lot of, um, there are individuals that take, um, uh, you know, a lot of opioids and medications that slow down that digestive tract yeah. and that um, may need stool softeners and they're not, um, you know, needing to go to the bathroom as often as they should throughout yeah. the day or the week. Um, I, and, you know, we know prunes. I mean, that, that's one of the, the things they tell us that we can do. What else can we do? Oh, that's, that's the easy part. That's, oh my, come on, come on. The, the reason why opioids um, sort of uh, leach out all the trace minerals that, that you need in order for you to go to the bathroom, like the magnesium, the B12s, and also your central fatty acids. That's the reason why you're not going to the bathroom. So you got to replace those, right? You gotta, so you got to have a lot of essential fatty acids. So you, so you got to take the hemp oil, the, the, the avocado oil, you know, um, put extra, you know, coconut oil or olive oil on your food to actually have the extra oils. Also hydrate and then also take magnesium. You know, people, you know, don't realize that, you know, a lot of individuals with sickle cell disease have too many of their trace minerals all off whack and magnesium is the, the one that actually is going to allow you to go to the bathroom, you know, so it, it's, it's you know, and I hear, that, oh, well, you know, I, I take this because of, yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah, but the same token, you should not have to take it if you're doing all the other things right, if you're doing all the other things right. Other thing that um, that happens is um, with these opioids, it makes your body produce a lot of mucus. And the reason why that happens is because the, the stomach line is all distressed. So it produces extra mucus to prevent the stomach line from being eroded away. So we got to make sure that, that, that we're eating proper to help the rebalance that as well. Do you, um, can you talk a little bit about sickle cell and pregnancy and, yeah. and staying healthy during a pregnancy? Because now you're feeding your body and you're feeding the body of a little one while trying to maintain your health and, and keep from going into a crisis. Yeah, definitely. You know, I, I had that question. Someone was uh, sending a message on my, on my IG about that question on this weekend. I was, I was trying to take a detox from, from uh, social media, but Long story short, you know, if you're pregnant with sickle cell disease, you know, relax, you know, and, and that's when you need to dial in your diet, dial in your rest a whole lot more. And this is just even for, for regular moms anyway, make sure that you're eating what your body needs, not just, oh, I'm pregnant, so I, I can have cheeseburgers and pickles and ice cream and all this other stuff. No, you can't. You want to make sure you're taking a beautiful uh, uh, um, a multivitamin that's good for you. You also want to make sure that you're getting as many plant-based nutrients as possible. Because again, you know, if you look at other cultures like, um, um, like, like in Japan, they actually have a higher IQ uh, because of the fact that they have a lot of uh, um, marine bionutrients. So a lot of, you know, shellfish or a lot of fish and a lot of um, iodine in their system. And, and, and iodine helps the body, it um, helps the neural core actually grow longer and grow stronger. So it's making more, more neural connections. So you're going to have a, 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 a more of our intelligent quotient type thing. Um, the essential fatty acids back, back to that, you know, um, and then doing things that are good for the body versus doing things that are bad for the body, you know, um, make sure you're walking, exercising, you building up your, your own blood supply while building up the blood supply that you also need for the baby as well. And just staying hydrated with, with a good trace mineral complex too. Um, and, and all these things, you will see that up until probably the third trimester, you're going to be feeling phenomenal because these hormones you're producing, you say, man, I feel awesome. And then the third trimester, like, wait a minute, this thing's getting heavy. So then start to pull on all those ligaments in different ways. That's when the stretching, that's when the, the, the pregnancy yoga and things of that sort is so important for you. And I always, all we get to ask, you know, okay, can you take even flow, you know, in, in the pregnancy? I said, I'm not even going to touch that question because I did not do any research with that because I won't, you know, don't want to do that. But the same token, I tell people, there's other things you can do, like ginger tea, green tea. All these teas are phenomenal with phytonutrients that's good for anti-inflammatory as well. So there are plenty of things you can do natural out there to help these ligaments stay nice and loose as well.
That's, that's, it's so interesting because of course, you know, we live in a capitalistic society (laughs) that would rather, you know, dress something up and sell it to us and tell us Mm -hmm. it's great for us. Um, And it is literally just the opposite and Mm -hmm. the simplicity of, you know, what we can even grow um, is, is right there in front of us. So um, speaking of, you know, minerals and herbs, what kind of herbs are best for daily use? And then what kind of herbs when you have an infection and you may be trying to address that? Yeah. I mean, um, if, we, if, if we're seeing the sickle cell realm, which I know we are, you forget yes. the cell realm. <laughs> uh, I mean, if you have sickle cell disease, and, 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 and I'm, I'm saying this because I've done 25 years of research with this, I put even flow out because of the fact that I know it's the best thing out there. The research shows that everything else, I, I'm saying this not as a plug, I'm saying it because I've seen, you know, the Dicus vents and I've seen some other things that's out there and the side effects and, and, and things that are sort that that comes along with it for taking a long period of time. I have some patients, including myself, that has been on even flow for the last 20, 15 to 20 years wow. with no side effects, right? And, 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 and again, I'm not saying it as a plug. For promise me when I say this, I'm the worst salesman. You that's know. okay. I'll plug it. I'll, <laughs> I can do it. I'll plug yeah. it. I, it, yeah. it stays in our house and yeah. I take it as, as a person living with trait as well as my son. And then we up it when he feels a crisis coming on. Exactly. So I'll plug it. You don't have to worry. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that's the reason why I created like that because, you know, the reason why I have no investors is a business that I have no investors because when I, early on, when people will start to, oh, Dr. Gray, you could produce this, you're going to do da, 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 da. Oh, well, it has to be these three things, it has to be these, the system, these systems, and one for when you have crisis, one for post crisis, one to prevent. I was like, listen, listen, you guys are, are saying hundreds of dollars for, for something that most of these people can barely even buy food, right? So I was like, I, I, and I kept working and I have nobody with me. And it was just me, me riding, you know, another, another friend of mine. And I said, I create this for daily use, but if you start feeling pain, take one every two hours. And most individuals don't see hospitals if they do it properly, you know? And, Absolutely. It has kept us out of the hospital on several occasion now he's 26 so he when he follows actually what i'm saying to do <laughs> exactly yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. when it keeps us out of the hospital but then he has he doesn't remember that the next time that he needs to follow it so of yeah course, you're right of course. De- definitely definitely so I, i'll say even flow but also um i'll say chlorophyll chlorophyll is something that it you know chlorophyll on itself because it is it, the greens and what we say with, with the chlorophyll or any sort of greens when it hits your body it, it has an ionic pull on any sort of you know, oxidative stress inside the body. That's what we say it naturally detoxifies the body. So, so we need the body to, to be naturally detoxifying. So that's why I throw chlorophyll inside there as well. But zinc, and zinc for a sickle cell patient is actually is several fold. The first fold is the fact that we've seen that genetically most sickle cell patients are deficient in zinc. Zinc does several things. One is phenomenal for immune system, you know, and it, it was some research out, out years and years ago and we recreated it was it showed that individuals that was having acute chest syndrome um, was really a deficiency in zinc because the thymus which is located right behind your sternum, which is where a lot of the chest crisis usually happen. If you are deficient in zinc, you can't produce thiamine. Thiamine is what is in the thymus that locates the actual viruses and infections inside the body and it marks it. So when you're not able to- word again. Thiamine. Thiamine, Thiamine. okay. Yes, and thiamine is, 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 you need the zinc to actually help locate it, you know? So that's why it's so important to make sure you have enough zinc inside your system. And they were able to show within a whole year of just taking the, the adequate amounts of zinc that no one in the normal test group that kept having chest syndromes three or four times a year had none in the entire year, yeah. not one. So it's so important to take the zinc. And also zinc is great for the, the immune system because it helps to create, the, it keeps the immune system higher. But zinc is also good for sleep. Um, we naturally produce melatonin because you need folate acid, you need zinc, and you need uh, ubiquitol to actually make the, have the, help the body to make uh, melatonin naturally in our body as well. So that's why it's so important. So um, those, those are a few ones I'll say that we should definitely have in our system. In, in our pack, and actually, that's one reason why our 
you know, even flow starter kit, it is even flow zinc and chlorophyll. We always start with those three. Um, the, uh, you know, a few others is magnesium. You know, you can throw that in there because people don't associate magnesium with the uh, immune system, but it's very, very um, closely linked to the immune system. Um, L-arginine, L-carginine are some other ones you can throw in there. Uh, talking about herbs for uh, for immunity, you, we're looking at you said you know, L-car. You said cardamom. Uh, L-carinine, cartonine. Sorry, cartonine. Okay, L-carinine. Right. Um. But you know, other herbs, if you want to look at from a perspective of immunity, you know, this is the simple ginger, turmeric, you're looking at um, uh, uh, echinacea, you're looking at golden seal, you can at burdock root, um, you're looking at the different mushrooms, the, the lion's mane, look at the reishi mushroom. Um, There's so many things you can look at, you know, to actually take. Um, what I drink on a daily basis, every morning I do, I, I juice them, so I, I make a whole big supply of, and I freeze it. I make ginger, turmeric, and, and lemon. You know, I'll, I'll juice the whole lemon, juice you know a bunch of turmeric and ginger, and I freeze it. And I, I pour, you know, maybe like a cube, uh, ice cube. You know, uh, um, I'm sorry, I put an ice cube um, um, of it in a cup and pour about you know 16 ounces of water of that. You know, like hot water, um, and I drink it as a tea every morning. And it helps to really detoxify my body, but also helps to improve my immune system as well. So, you know, you must be reading my mind because I was going to say tea. First of all, I was able to get off years and years and years and years of drinking coffee every now and then. But, but tea and finding the right tea, I was amazed when I found a certain brand of tea, the change oh. that just naturally happened. And they had different ones. So if it was sleep, I was trying to get more sleep. Um, yeah. If it was, you know, a stomach issue that I had and drinking that tea calmed it. Um, yeah. If it was anxiety and stress even. Yeah. So there are, you know, it, it saddens me that our culture, particularly um, the black culture in America has been, is so far removed from the very things we brought here. Yeah. <laughs> right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there's things we can boil there's plants we can boil yes. but learning those things requires that we you know you talk about detoxing the body we got to detox the mind you know oh. because <laughs> we don't think we we don't ask the right questions we we've, we've yeah. learned we've been taught not to ask questions so if someone just wanted to be able to grow the right herbs at home yeah what would be some things that would be easy to grow but would be very helpful useful in either cooking or teas or or whatnot i mean uh, and, and all the above will be able to use as a tea because i mean i i love rosemary tea people don't realize how phenomenal rosemary really is for the brain so if you even if you um you know risk the strokes or whatever drink rosemary tea or rub, rub rosemary oil you know, um, you know, on your temples, but um, things that you can easily grow at home, things I have, of course, parsley, chives, uh, basil, rosemary, cilantro, um, and ginger and turmeric are the easiest things to grow people, you know, okay. oh my, okay. In this, Minnesota? This well, I mean, you can start inside the house, you can start inside, inside the yeah. house, yeah, so the thing you do is you take a piece of uh, ginger, you break a little piece off, put in some dirt, start watering it. That's it. That's it. I actually have a few pots. Ginger plant tomorrow. Let me tell you. I'm telling you, it's like I I, I start growing ginger, turmeric, uh, my green scallions. You know, I was like, wait a minute, let me try this out. I have some green scallions. I had some from, from some organic ones. I put them inside of the of different pots, and I mean, I go there and I chop it off, and two weeks later, another one grow up, and I chop it off. So I save money there as well. You know, but but I, I'm, I'm giving you guys a, a quick little. If you start feeling like you're getting ready to come down with a cold, it's so funny. Um, when I tell people this, like, really? Um, greens, like scallions, the green scallions you get from the storm. Yes. If you just take the green, uh, I mean, sorry, the, on the white part, chop that up, put a little piece of ginger inside there and boil that for five minutes and you sip on that all day long. If you feel like you're getting a little cold or a sneeze, a sniff or whatever, 90% of the time you can get rid of it just with the green scallion, I'm sorry, the, the, the white part of scallion, and a little piece of ginger 
and this this is an old 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 Chinese uh, remedy yeah. that still today it still works. You know, I mean, people are like, you know, but what are you drinking? I'm like a little bit of ginger, a little bit of green, you know, green onion. They're like, what? I'm like, yeah, I feel like I was getting ready to get something this morning. You know, I had a little tickle in my throat, so I drinking that by the afternoon, I'm good. Like nothing ever 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 happened. Wow, that you know, that's why I named this session. I included God's medicine cabinet. Oh. And you know, I remember telling my son when he, you know, transitioned into adulthood, I, I, I call it the I'm grown cape. Yeah. Um, and 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 I and I told him, I said, you know, that what, what you put in your body is <laughs> either um medicine or illness it is yeah. it's either going to help you to live or it's going to help you to die and you know by they they develop these taste buds that tell them what they need and what they want yeah. and those taste buds lie to you until oh, yeah. you change them you know you you again mm -hmm. when you detox from it i remember taking my son you know he had sickle cell disease he had asthma um he he his, his sickle hemato uh, phenotype was just, it was challenging and complicated. And he had his spleen out. I remember when I stopped and he was very young. I stopped eating off the dollar menu. Oh, geez. It was, it was early and he might've been four or five years old. Yeah, yeah. He loved yeah. chicken nuggets. Of course, I was like, listen, we're going to be making these chicken nuggets because whatever yeah. they add into that is it was the ADHD actually that made me originally start looking at yeah. what was going in his body that was getting having this this reaction in him that he didn't feel like he could control. And it was all the chemicals. So if the chemicals that they put in there can get in our body and do horrible things, what happens when we put the good things into our body, the good chemicals, the good exactly. herbs, the good vitamins, the good minerals? Yep. It's that simple. Yeah, it, 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 it really is. But, you know, there's a huge fear factor when you talk to people about diet. And, I, and I'll tell you the reason why is because, as you just said, is, is that I'm grown cake, right? So think about how long you controlled his diet. Then all of a sudden I can go out with my friends and I can eat whatever it is I want. I'm like, yeah, you can. I said, but the consequence is if you're in the hospital or not. I said, I chose years ago to not feel pain. You know, I, I was in college. I drank the whole nine. And last time I actually drank and got real, real messed up. I mean, it's, it's kind of disgusting, but I mean, there was a, a design on the wall. Right. Wall Your body was like, no more. <laughs> exactly. It, it was yeah. vomiting blood and everything else. And it was like, wow, I was in the bed for two weeks. Yes. Two yeah. weeks. You yeah. know, and, and, and I tell people that story. I'm like, listen, you have to understand that it comes to a point where all this supposed fun, it is what it is. I still get teased. I still get teased by family or whoever it is and say, oh, you still eat like that? I'm like, yeah, but I take no medication at all. I yeah. said, I'm almost 50 years old and I can still outrun all my kids. I dunked on my, my oldest son and I, I'm only five, like five, nine. I dunked on my, my oldest son like a month and a half, two months ago, you know? So I'm like, I take very good care of my, uh, again, my body. And I, I don't care if you say, oh, well, you know, aren't you missing, you know, these pork chops? Aren't you missing all these, this food? I'm like, but why would I miss it when I have not had it in 30 plus years? Yeah. And the and cost feel, of having it is great. Exactly. I'm like, but look, look at this. I'm sorry. It's like, I'm not bragging. I'm saying I'm doing it for a reason to yeah. make sure that with my kids or my age, they look like me. Wow. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's a whole thing that I'm passing health and wealth down to my kids. I'm not passing, I don't pass disease down to my kids to say that oh, I had an argument with a supposed friend of mine because she said, you don't take your kids to, to McDonald's? I was like, no, why? It, it, it's a rite of passage. I said, no, it's a rite of passage for me to teach my kids health. I'm like, you're coming to me because you're unhealthy. Am I coming to you because I'm unhealthy? I said, no, no. So that's why it's important for me to, to have people understand that it's easy to get in those, as you said, those traps, those cultural traps that uh, eating such and such. And I saw someone making um, uh, candy yams a couple of days ago. I'm like, wow. Like that's a lot of sugar. That's a lot of butter. You know, my, my, my mother has won competitions with her, her pies or her sweet potato pie, won competitions. When I go home this weekend, my mom wants me to make her four things. 
my asparagus she loves, my spinach she loves, and any sort of breakfast I make, which of course is going to be vegan, she loves, and she loves my potato pie. She was like, I don't know how you make a vegan, it's all vegan, I don't know how you do it. She said, but it's so good. I'm like, exactly. You have to learn how to make things taste the way you want. I don't do fake meats either. I don't do the fake hamburgers or the fake meats. I don't do any of that stuff. I eat so just- I just want to pause for a second because plant-based is a little bit of false advertisement. Exactly. <laughs> a, a, a whole lot of uh, false advertising. You well, know, I, I just want to cover ourselves in case somebody watched this video that said we're slandering them, but the, that's the reality. That's, it's, it's not true. Exactly. But plant-based basically means that you're taking plants and you're, I mean, as someone said, I chop a bunch of veggies up and made into a patty and a fry. Okay, great, fine. It's cool. But don't try to sell me something that has no meat inside of it. It has soy. Oh, that's a plant. I'm like, but it has another 40 different chemicals inside of it. Yes. That's costing more. And if you're having canola oil, canola oil only creates inflammation inside of the veins and venules. That's all it does, right? It only creates more. Of, I mean, come on, man. So, so I mean, it, it, if I go somewhere, and, and it's funny because I love Ethiopian food, and I found a spot here in South Florida that actually sells it. When I first started going to them, and I and one the, the lady that owns the spot, she used to work at Whole Foods, so I, that's why I met her. And I ate some, and I saw a coffee. Anytime I have something that I knew I shouldn't have, I saw it producing, producing mucus almost immediately, and I saw a coffin. And so next time I was, I was like, so what sort of oils do you use? And she told me, she said, oh, usually grapeseed oil, because she said it's vegan, so we don't use the clarified butter, because usually in Ethiopian food, they use clarified butter. She said, no, she said, no, I, I switched over to using canola oil. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, well, can you do me a favor? Can you do me a huge favor? I said, honestly, canola oil is like the worst oil you can use, even veggie oil. Yeah. So I say, if you use a grapeseed oil, is okay. I say, you work at Whole Foods, you get a huge discount. It's not going to change the price of your food a whole lot. I say, use the, the, only these two oils if you can. I say, olive oil is very, very expensive. So I understand that. But use these other oils and you tell the taste and flavors of her food is so great. It tastes as if I'm, you know, in, 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 in Ethiopia. But, you know, my point of saying this is, is the fact that if you are not allowing your body and not recognizing the signs and symptoms in your body of what causes pain, you are always forever be in the dark about what's going to make you sing. Right. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, honestly, I, I ate a little bit earlier. I ate an avocado toast earlier, but, you know, I eat things that I know is going to make sure that I feel great and not feel horrible. I occasionally have a French fry. I'm like, yeah, I have a few French fries and I get bloated, I get that nasty taste in my mouth and I feel take a bunch of stuff to get it out or whatever, I'm getting ready to go traveling. So either I'm going to take my food with me or I'll find different places that I know I can get food from where I'm not going to get sick on the road. It's so important for you guys to do those things like that. Yeah. Planning ahead, you know, thinking yes. about it. Sometimes, you know, when I was at my heaviest, I, all of those four things you were talking about when I was at my heaviest is when I wasn't paying attention to those things. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I'm and, and trust me, you know, I, I still have a long way to go. But boy, oh boy, I've come a long way because I've learned the hard way and I've learned to listen to my body. I've learned, OK, why do my why do my knees hurt today? OK, what did I eat yesterday? Yep. Right. I, exactly. I now can hear my body talking, whereas I had drowned it out for so long eating yep. for taste. Um, yep. not knowing that I, I had an addiction to the chemicals that were being used to create food, not to mention, you know, all of these foods, you know, seedlings are coming through labs now. They're creating yeah. them in a lab. Yeah. They are not coming from, you know, quality um, indigenous foods yeah. that, 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 that create the natural minerals, the natural elements that we need. So, yeah. I want to say because I really do respect your time. I am. I want to give um, the the folks, the attendees who are with us live, um, a, a last chance to ask any potential questions that they have. Our YouTube audience is is going to love this. We can't wait to promote it because this is priceless information. And I know your love for the sickle cell community, but let me say, you know. Um, the value of your time and your wisdom uh, is is has several zeros on it, you know, <laughs> and, and so I want people to understand that, you know, this 
this, this free knowledge you're giving to us is invaluable and really does cost because um, we're giving all kinds of money to the doctors, to the nurses, to the healthcare system, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's time that we invest in ourselves. I, I put the website for healingblendsglobal.com. I put that in the, 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 the chat, but I wanna make sure that people who might just be viewing this um, as an on-demand replay, it is healingblendsglobal.com. Several years I've known about Dr. Ware and for several years I've applied it as I've learned it. I didn't start out doing everything. I couldn't, I, I was overwhelmed. I'm not yeah. even gonna lie, I was over. I was like, well, let me start with this one little thing. Yeah. <laughs> and then it grew, you know, yeah. um, having that even flow chlorophyll, I, the, the, I, I would be upset in my house if we ran out, <laughs> let's put it that way. <laughs> so they are the staples, you know, um, yeah. uh, and so those are the little things that we can do. You can go to the website that, and, and you, they can communicate with you through the website. Uh, and, and, and if they are trying to get in touch with you um, or have questions or would like a consult of, of some sort um, to address something specific in their lives. Exactly. This is awesome. This is awesome. Let me just add, because I have to do my, my final closing um, things so that we don't miss out. I want to make sure I pull the right window up. <laughs> All right. So as I said, do y'all see my thank you screen? Yes. Okay, yes. perfect. I do want to make sure that I say it again. Uh, a huge, huge. I, I look forward to all of our Sickle Smart events, but every now and then there's, there's those, the, the ones that like make me feel like a kid inside, like, yes, yes, I can't wait. Um, and you're just one of them. You're one of them. So Dr. Charlie Ware, natural medicine physician, Healing Blends Global, you can go to his website, his personal website at drcharlieware.com to learn more about him and all of the different facets, his multidimensional approach to medicine and all them other words that you use that, that, that it are only now being introduced to our society, but epigenetics and all of those, there, there's... Y'all, I have a medical background and I'm telling you that that's the next phase of medicine, but understand it before they start um, placing their narrative on it. Exactly. So, uh, exactly. and, and then you can also, as I said, go to healingblendsglobal.com. He is also all over social media. What I love is you do have a global reach. You do um, make your, your products available um, outside of the US. So Nigeria is... We know that the burden of sickle cell disease is yeah. in Nigeria and, and they do not have the access that we have here. Uh, and so you can follow Dr. Ware on any of his platforms as well. Uh, I also want to make sure that you know that um, we also have one more session coming up this month. This Thursday, we will be talking about health disparities and inequities in sickle cell disease. Now, Dominique Bolgen is an amazing person, um, and, and she she's just going to come and she's going to bring it home, but she's also going to talk about the, the, the global impact and how what's happening in other countries um, that, that we may not, as Americans, be thinking about. What are they doing? What are they struggling with? What are their barriers? But where are they, you know, may, they might be um, understanding things better than we are because of natural medicine. So don't miss that one this Thursday. Uh, and then we just recently, so you, we're on track here. We just recently, last week, in fact, to open up Sickle Cell Awareness Month, we did East Meets West with Biba Tinga. She's the president of Sickle Cell Disease Association of Minnesota, um, but she hails from Sub-Saharan Africa. She talks about her journey. We try to keep these to an hour. We talked for two hours and no one got offline. Yeah. That's how rich that discussion was. We are both warrior moms. So we had a lot to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. You can see that on our YouTube channel as well. And then I say it all the time. If you really want to lend a hand, lend an arm. Mm -hmm. There is a, an international blood shortage. Um, and we here in America are privileged. We don't have to go find our, our, our donors to donate blood, but... Um, I recommend that you do, uh, but um, nonetheless, uh, we, our blood saves lives. We are the hour. Ain't nobody come to save us. 
we, we, we have to show up for us. So I encourage you, um, if you can, please do. And if you'd like to learn more about diversifying the blood donor pool, we do have a Sickle Smart session on that that you can check out on our YouTube channel as well. Awesome. And then be the match. There is a cure available through bone marrow transplant. It has been available for over 30 years. Awesome. Everyone is not, um, it, it is not for everyone. We do say that. Um, but those who it is for, who it who, who can benefit from it, um, we decrease the number of people who could benefit from it because we are not on the registry. So awesome. again, listen, Mother Africa is powerful. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even have time to go into that, but, exactly. but what we have in our genetic structure, trust me when I tell you, um, it, it is, it is healing. It, it, it is miraculous. Um, and they, there's a lot, they don't want to tell you. Okay. Let me okay. just say that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and also, if you want to find out more information about what Be The Match does, how they can support your journey uh, through a, a bone marrow or stem cell transplant, you can go to sicklecellconnect.com and order a little starter pack um, and, and, and speak with someone as well. Our monthly activities, don't forget, cooking for your health, it's all about cooking with inflammatory, anti-inflammatory ingredients in your everyday diet. So I didn't even tell you, Dr. Ware, we have a monthly live cooking demonstration show. You know, this wasn't a one-time event. We take it seriously and we want to grow that um, because this is, these are the things, you know, we have to, it takes that much longer to get the word out about the good stuff mm -hmm. than it does the bad stuff. So exactly. we keep doing it um, as we spread the word. And of course, we have our uh, sickle cell support group for um, adults and adolescents. If you are local in Minnesota and you need school support, whether that's school supplies, um, assistance with education plans, nurse education, or even school meals, we know that that's a struggle. You got to eat. So your brain needs to eat um, and eat the right thing. So we do want to make sure that we can assist with that. And then, of course, our annual sickle celebration of hope coming up on Friday, September 23rd. You can learn more about that um, through our YouTube channel. Uh, not, not our YouTube channel, our Event Bright channel, the same place you went to to sign up for this. And I was talking about Our Voice Matters earlier on. So what we did, um, we don't have a registry that tracks, you know, all of the cases of sickle cell disease, unlike they do for, for cancer. But we don't want to lose the value of our voice. Learning how to use your voice for good. It's okay to make good trouble, but let's define what good trouble is, right? Mm -hmm. Learning how to tell your story, learning how to file your complaints. Um, uh, but, and, and let me just say, we want to know the good stories and the bad. Why, why does that good, why do, why do good reports matter? Because there's people who are looking for some, a, a good hospital to go to, a good provider to go to. And we want to be able to give them that knowledge based on your experiences. So Our Voices Matter is open um, nationally. We, it doesn't matter where you're at. It's a, it's, it allows us, when we are sitting at tables of influence, to have discussions about lived experiences. We don't use your name. We keep that private. But learning how to tell your story in an effective manner to help others um, is important. Yes, it's about us, but it's bigger than us. We mm -hmm. have to make sure that we are part of a bigger community and that we pay it forward. I, I would never want you know, um, someone else's child to go through some of the challenges that my son went through. So if I've learned things along the way, I'm going to pass that along. Mm -hmm. um, so that's important. So that is it. Be sure to support our partners and sponsors. Um, they are very important to helping us get our message out there. But again, ah, Dr. Ware, thank you so much. I'm so grateful, so appreciative. I, I will continue to, 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 to voice um, you know, my, my praises, but more than that, my respect. Uh, for you because of what you've been doing and the longevity. You, you have been there and you have stayed there and you continue to make sure that you are leaving an imprint wherever you go um, so that things can be better for those of us living with sickle cell disease and sickle cell trait. So thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and likewise, likewise with you, 
Um, I, I see a lot of uh, one page uh, foundations, as I tell people. Um, and I appreciate the fact that you have so much going on. In fact, um, I'm a part of another foundation called the Eat Well Exchange. So, you know, definitely let's, let's um, hook up with them because they do a lot of um, food demonstrations and things like that. So especially um, using cultural foods. So I, I want to make sure. Yes, I'm in Minnesota. We need cultural food, please. So. <laughs> you know, uh, and, and yes, I eat collard greens almost every day. I saw Tim, but but you know, um, but again, I, I'll definitely make an introduction with that to see how you know they can come on and be a part of. That would be great. Your seminars as well. It'd be phenomenal. That would be great. That we'll we'll talk about that for sure. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you. Have a wonderful night, everyone. We hope to see you on our next episode of Living Sickle Smart. Have a nice night and get all your rest. Sleep. Yes. yes. <laughs> God bless. Thank you.